unless you've been living under a rock, you've seen Tiger King. It's all over Netflix. It's all over Twitter. It's all over Instagram. Everyone's talking about it. Your mom's even talking about it. So I just wanted to give you guys an update on the cast, tell you what they've been doing since the documentary. We've got some really, really juicy things that I didn't even think that people could do in the span of a few weeks with the whole coronavirus climate. But it is Tiger King. Haven't seen this documentary. You'd be the only one. Go and watch it. Um, it's very, very interesting. So the first person we're going to give an update on is Joe. Joe the Tiger King. Despite being in federal prison, Joe is still very, very active on social media. He's always been very active on social media. He announced that he is actually having a new jailhouse lawsuit. He announced this on March 19th on his Facebook page. The lawsuit is against the feds and it's asking President Trump to pardon his conviction for orchestrating that murder for hire plot against Carol Baskin and for violating the Endangered Species Act when it comes to those tiger carcasses that was found on his property. This lawsuit has been filed in the name of justice. The Trump administration must be made aware. I'm sorry, I'm really going to try not to laugh. Um, the Trump administration must be made aware of the overreach, perjury, and abuse of power and the failure to uphold the oath of their position, which is truth and justice for all. The agencies and its counterparts have been abused the system for a private agenda. Basically, he's trying to insinuate that Carol Baskin somehow like um, manipulated the feds. I don't know. I have been illegally charged with these crimes and the Trump administration, the United States Department of Interior, along with the Federal Wildlife Service must be held accountable for what they have done to me, my parents, my family, along with my animals. Thank you and please share. Somebody call Kim Kardashian and get Joe out of here. I'm not really sure what he's expecting. At the end of the day, Joe did put those animals down in an inhumane way. He's even given documentation towards PETA to tear other people down for doing those horrible things that he was doing himself. So I don't think that Joe's going to be getting out of jail anytime soon, but that is the latest thing um, from Joe. OK, so now I'm going to get to John Finley, who is Joe's boyfriend, who was shown topless throughout the whole docu documentary. So the big news for him is that he actually got new teeth. Now, I don't know if it's because I live in Florida and I'm used to seeing um, people with messed up country teeth here. I didn't even notice his teeth were messed up, but he actually got them fixed in 2019 during the filming. And he was upset that Netflix mainly showcased him with the messed up teeth. The producers never showed his improvements in the end. So that really got him upset. He also wanted to set the record straight that his original teeth were the result of genetics and not meth use. Um, as you guys saw in the docuseries, there was a lot of meth use going on. And he just wanted to let you guys know that that that's not why his teeth fell out, okay? He does admit that, you know, he did used to use meth, but that's just not what it was from. He's currently working as a welder and he lives in central Oklahoma and he actually has a fiance, so congratulations. We're gonna get on to Jeff Lowe. Last month, Lowe actually proposed to his girlfriend on the Las Vegas Strip. We saw her a lot in the docuseries. They were both listed as Las Vegas residents in the engagement notice. However, according to the city of Las Vegas, Lowe is actually a wanted man. He has multiple warrants out for his arrest and he hasn't paid about four of some court ordered fines. But despite this, Jeff and his fiance don't seem to have any worries. Um, and they have even recently posted them with their quote unquote hot nanny on Instagram. Instagram. Jeff still owns Joe's old zoo, but he runs it under a new name. He stated in a deleted Facebook post, Lauren and I remain committed to the care of the hundreds of animals who rely on us to keep them safe and healthy. It has exhausted the small fortune I once held. I even sold my Ferrari to help build our animals larger enclosures, but I wouldn't trade our lives with any Hollywood star. We've had some incredibly generous supporters. We're doing great. And when this is over, this coronavirus crap has passed. We will ramp things back up. How Ever a producer, Netflix producer for Tiger King, checked in on Joe and actually visited the park and had an interview with Entertainment Weekly and told them, I got a very long text today from Jeff Lowe's. He is running Joe's old zoo. 
all I can tell you is that he is basically operating on fumes. No one is going now and there's no source of income and that's been going on for some time. It's not something that has just happened because of what's happening in the world today. Um, I'm presuming he's speaking about the coronavirus. So the producers are saying like, you know, it's not as great as he's trying to portray it on social media because he is very active on Instagram. Seems like he is living his best life or at least is trying to portray as such. Now, I really wanted to figure out what happened to Alan Glover. That was Jeff's right-hand man in the film. The crazy thing that stood out to me is that it's kind of like an erasure of his digital footprint. Not much is known about him or his whereabouts. I've looked everywhere. Multiple media outlets have actually reached out to the park that Jeff owns. But Jeff, being Alan's right-hand man for life, he's refusing to provide an update on Alan. Alan is trying to say as private as possible. Um, not not even in he won't even give information or a confirmation I'm sorry on whether he still works at the park or not I saved Carol Baskin for last because there have been some new testimonies regarding her late husband and a surprise witness that I wasn't even aware of it wasn't he wasn't mentioned in the docu-series and it's just very interesting. So Carol Baskin, obviously she hated how she was portrayed in the Netflix series and she felt deceived. This is a video for our supporters to explain to you the deception that took place in the making of the Netflix Tiger King and to thank you so much for so many expressions of support that we have received from you. Her and her husband even made this long blog post rant. Um, I'm not going to read all of this on camera for you guys, but if you do want to check it out, I will be leaving the link in the description so you guys can read it. What she's mainly upset about from the gist that I've gotten is she's mainly upset about the fact that they talked about her late husband. And what she had to say about that was, the series presents this without any regard for the truth, or in most cases, even giving me an opportunity before publication to rebuke the absurd claims. They did not care about the truth, the unsafe lies are better for getting viewers. Now, I don't know what she means about that because there are multiple times in the documentary where she kind of went tick for tack for what those people were saying about her. Right now, she is still doing guided tours on her sanctuary and they are 80 bucks a pop. So she is still making money off of these tigers. She still posts daily on her YouTube channel. Um, this is her YouTube channel. Her most recent content is her reading her own diary, which was mentioned in the documentary as well. Joe used to read her diary in like a very, you know, cheek and tongue condescending type of way but no she's actually reading her diary audiobook style on her channel it's organized by the dates um in which things happen prior to that um it's just a bunch of big cat content and just you know some home videos all of the information and documentation I'm about to share is public. I just want to make that clear. As of March 24th, 2020, these documents have been public. I'm not doxing anybody. I just want to make that clear. Our last mystery character is Jay Bakel. I hope I am pronouncing his last name right. After Don Lewis disappeared, and I'm talking very shortly after he disappeared, but still before Carol met Howard, her current husband that we see on the docuseries, she dated a man named Jay Bacal. Now, in 2002, Jay filed a restraining order against Carol. The restraining order had some very eerie information inside and very similar things um, to what Don had said before him, before Don went missing himself. Similar to Don's restraining order, Jay's was also denied. According to the report, the couple even lived together at one point. You have to click off whether you live with them or not. He clicked off the box of we either have or do live with each other. So this wasn't like some little fling or a one night stand, like this is someone she trusted in her home. So his statement reads, on the date of October 16, 2002, on the phone and at home, the respondent told me she will kick my ass out of here, whatever it takes. I honestly fear I am in danger of death or serious bodily injury because her prior husband is, he, he put was, but scratched it out, is missing. And he is presumed dead. One day she said to me, when I asked her what happens if your husband just shows up, her response was, dead bodies cannot talk. Yeah. Her former husband's daughter told me that she could be dangerous and to watch my back. The respondent carries two guns loaded, always one in her truck, one in her residence. She said she was a suspect in her husband's disappearance. Recently, three to four days ago, 
She told me human bones were found near Lazy Days RV Center. She said she hopes it's not on her property or she will be in deep shit. Sorry for all that profanity, but I just needed to read it exactly how it was. Now, if that's not insane evidence, I don't know what is. And like I stated previously, they rejected the protection order saying no facts of violence or specific credible threat of imminent fear. My predictions are that this whole thing is far from over. I'm definitely going to come back to this crew in about maybe a year, maybe eight months or so, and give another update. I see inevitable jail bars in a lot of people's futures. I do see um, new cases being open, maybe things being relooked. A lot of the conversation regarding this docuseries isn't whether or not Joe should stay in jail, but rather, when the hell is Carol Baskin and Jeff gonna get arrested? Even people involved in the documentary have admitted they are also waiting on the same thing. So how do you guys feel about these updates on the cast? Does any of this surprise you? Have you ever heard of Jay Bakel or seen these documents before this video? If not, what do you think? Do you think that there is even a slight chance that any other people could face time behind bars. I'd love to hear your opinion as well. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I will see you guys next time.